Hello folks, my name is Lee Townsend and welcome to part three of this four part video series on how to make music covers on YouTube. Uh, this section of the series is going to be on the video editing side of things. Part two was about the audio and audio editing and part one was about the equipment that you're going to need. If you haven't seen those other parts already, you can watch part two by clicking the card above. If you haven't seen part one, you can click my name below, go to my channel and go through my uploads until you've found part one of this video series. Uh, so we're gonna get stuck straight in. I'm using Adobe Premiere Pro as my uh, video editing software. So if you're using anything other than Premiere Pro, it is gonna vary slightly. Um, I would recommend if you don't want to pay the money for Premiere Pro to use something like Sony Vegas, um, just because I've used it before and I know that it's very, very simple to get your head around and it's very similar in the way it works to Premiere Pro. Um, so as you can see, I've got the window open here of Premiere Pro. Uh, there's a few recent projects there that I've worked on over the past couple of weeks or whatever. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to create a new project because we're going to be doing everything from scratch. Uh, I'm going to re-edit my cover of Don't Dream It's Over by Crowded House. So I'm going to give it a name, Don't Dream It's Over, D-D-I-O. I'm going to save that in this location here, which is... Um, where I always save the videos that I'm working on at the moment. I'd like to add at this point, it makes sense to have the video that you're working on at the time on your main C drive of your computer, just because uh, that's quicker for your computer to access rather than working off like an external hard drive or something like that. Once you've edited the video, you can always move those files to an external hard drive if you're going to keep them. Uh, but yeah, what you're working on now should always be on your C drive just for ease of use and because it's faster. Uh, everything else here we're going to keep the same. We're going to click OK. And it should give us the window that looks a bit like this. So this section here where it says program is going to be where the video itself appears when we start to edit. Up here we're going to have some video effects and effects controls. Here is the timeline which is very similar to the timeline in the audio editing software where we've got those bars that go across and the bar that moves across you know, to keep it all in sync and stuff. You'll see what I mean when I start to edit. And over here, uh, we're going to have the different files that we're using during the editing of the video. So the first thing we're going to do is right click on where it says import media to start. And we're going to go to import. And this is the part where we need to find the video files that we're going to be working from. So the video that you've taken from your camera and the audio that you've exported from whatever audio editing software you're using. So mine is stored in videos and current projects and don't dream it's over. I happen to know is this one 6828. So I'm going to uh, import that and I'm also going to import this audio file, which is called May 2020. The reason it's called that is because I edited, I recorded four videos all at the same time, I think, and I just exported the audio all as one file. So, uh, but that's going to help with this video. So we're going to click open and... The next part is dragging the first video file into the timeline itself. If you're using more than one camera angle here, you should always drag first the video that's the aspect ratio that you want the whole video to be exported as because uh, when I drag this video onto this timeline, the whole project becomes that size, physical size. So if you've got one camera that's 4K, for example, and one camera that's 1080p, if you drag the 1080p video first, the entire project will become a 1080p video. So when you then drag the 4K video on top, you'll have to shrink it down because it will be really zoomed in. Same goes the other way. If you uh, drag a 4K file first and then a 1080p file, the 1080p file will be really small in the middle and you'll have to stretch it. Um, but for the purposes of this video, I'm doing a very, very simple edit today. Um, so I've got one camera angle and one audio file. So I'm going to grab this video here and drag it onto the timeline, which is going to create a sequence. So this section here, where it says V1, this track, if you like, is going to be the video track. This A1 here is going to be the audio track. You can see by the waveform there that that's audio and this is video. And um, the way this software works is whichever... Uh, layer is above the layers below um, they will always display on top of if you've ever used Photoshop it's the same as layers in Photoshop whichever one is dragged above the others in the 
in this timeline, they will display on top. So if I've got, um, for example, in my the top corner here, I've got this Tweed TV thing. Um, if I had that below the video file, you wouldn't be able to see it because the watermark would sit behind the video, if that makes sense. Um, but obviously, one camera angle here makes it very, very simple. What I'm going to do now is get this May 2020 audio file and drag that into an audio, an empty audio track. Uh, so I'm going to drag it here to A2. Um, and as I said, this audio file contains a few takes of various songs. So I've got to figure out which one of these is Don't Dream It's Over. So I'm going to do that simply by clicking here and hitting play. Uh, that is Everlong by the Foo Fighters. This one... That's the Master Plan by Oasis. This one here. That's another take of the Master Plan. I obviously did more than one take of that. Uh, this one is... That's Sonnet by The Verve. So I'm guessing this last one is going to be... Don't Dream It's Over. So I want to just cut this one song out of this um, audio file. So that's very, very simple to do. I, if I hit C, the key of C on my keyboard... Uh, C for cut or crop. Uh, it turns the cursor into this uh, icon, which is like a, a razor blade. And it allows me to cut this um, track wherever I want to. So I can just hit the cut there, press V on my keyboard to go back to the cursor icon. And then I can delete all of this stuff that comes before. I can then move this audio file to the beginning. So I'm going to zoom out by pressing Alt on the keyboard and scrolling downwards with my scroll wheel on my mouse um, so I can drag this over and then I can make these match up so what you've got to do now is find a part of this video uh, the part of these two waveforms that you can really tell where there's a, a break or a cut so I can tell here that this part and this part are supposed to match up um, so what I can do is drag this audio file so that they look the same. Can you see there? It's blatantly obvious where they should line up. So I can zoom in more to be more accurate with it. So something like that. I'm going to use these two points because they're very um, visible to make sure that... Uh, that's going to, I need to zoom in a little bit more. I want it so I can go one and maybe two um, things across. So they're like properly lined up now. And you can check that you've done that right by uh, muting the camera audio. That's the audio that's baked directly into the camera when you film. You can use your phone for this as well, by the way. Um, so this is literally just the MVI file straight out of the camera that you're using. Um, so what I want to do is mute the camera audio, which is A1 here. I just click this M and that will mute the audio that comes directly out of the camera. So if I click here now and press play, this video that I'm seeing in this window and the audio that I'm hearing through my speakers should be in sync. So, so you can see that my mouth on the video is moving along with the music, which means that I've done it right. It's, um, it's all synced up. Uh, but what, you, what is blatantly obvious here in this waveform is that this was a false start. So if I go to here... Sorry about the annoying mopeds that keep going past, by the way. Um, I've got my window open, so um, I can hear all the traffic. But, yeah, so there's a, a stop here. So. There is freedom within. That was dreadful. So you can see why I stopped that, actually. Um, so this next part is where the actual take is going to start. So if I stop there, I can press C on my keyboard like I did before to bring up that... Um, cut icon the razor blade icon and if i cut that video and my new audio at the same time press v again and then click and drag over these i can hit delete and now i know even if that audio moves when those two um tracks line up that's in sync it just makes it easier for me later on so i can zoom out i know that that's where the video is starting and where the audio is starting I can do the same thing at the end go right to the end of the song um, And I want that to be faded out by that point. Um, and I can cut all of those again. Cut those, cut those. And I know now that whatever I do with this file, 
nothing from before that point or after that point are going to be shown. It's just the bit that I want. Um, so I'm going to hit Control and S to save that. Very important that you keep doing that because if your computer crashes, if your video editing software crashes your computer, you could lose all of your changes. So it's very important to keep saving your work as it is with anything to do with computers. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do is uh, fade the video and the audio in at the start. So rather than just, <coughs> excuse me, just let me grab a drink. So rather than just a hard, um, I'll just drag this to the beginning of the timeline so you can see right at the beginning, rather than just a hard start where it's just on like that, we want it to fade from a black screen in gradually. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit there. Um, and what I'm going to do is go up here to uh, the effects panel, which is already selected. Um, I'm going to go to video transitions. I'm going to go to dissolve and I'm going to grab this cross dissolve um, effect and drag it to the beginning of the video track. And that adds this little icon here, which makes, uh, if I play that from the start, you'll see in this window here, it's now a black screen and it fades in gradually. That's literally how easy it is to create a fade with Premiere Pro. And the same thing goes for fading audio from zero decibel, well, minus whatever decibels into the audio level that you've got. Um, before I do that, something that I've just forgotten that I always do is um, right at the beginning, I'll select that audio file and max out this level here because the without properly mastering an audio track, they tend to be quite quiet. So I'll boost that to six decibels plus six decibels. For some reason, when I'm working on my Mac, I can actually set this to plus 15 decibels. I don't know why it won't let me go that high on a PC. Someone could probably tell me that in the comments, but... Um, yeah, that's just to make sure that the audio is a, as loud as it can be, really. Um, and then I'm going to go over here, similar sort of thing as the video transition. We're going to the audio transitions, crossfade, and I use this constant power effect to fade in the audio. So now the beginning of the video is going to look like this. And you can hear that that, um, that audio is a lot quite a lot louder with just those six decibels as a sort of boost. Um, so the next thing that I'm going to do is uh, mess with the video a little bit because for me, this is a little bit too zoomed out. I'm like quite small in the screen. I'd rather it was zoomed in a little bit. So I select the video file here, which uh, into this effects controls panel uh, sort of brings in all of these effects that you can add. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this 100 here where it says scale and I'm going to scale that up. So I'm going to make it 120, let's say, which, as you can see, doing that makes the whole video zoom in. Um, but also what that's done is made me off center. So I can use this position section here, click that 960 and move myself across to like, I don't know, there, there, maybe. Um, just to give you an idea of how that works. So you can zoom in and move things around a little bit. You can also go up and down if by changing this 540 um, section here. Um, and then after that, I'm going to hit Control and S again because save your work, ladies and gents. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of color grading to this as well. So I've still got the video file, the video track selected here. So I'm going to go over here to Lumetri Color. Um, which will bring up this panel and what I'm first going to do is set the white balance so that the colors are accurate to realistic colors so uh, I can click this eyedropper tool here and click anywhere in the video file that's white or gray or completely desaturated you don't want any color in there luckily my headboard on my bed is white so I can just click that and it'll color grade it you can tell by the way it's moved this temperature and tint uh, off center it's sort of corrected those colors a little bit it's very subtle but it does make a difference for example if i was to white balance selector and click this blue you can see that it makes it look really orange and really hot i guess um but yeah you can sort of mess around with that to get your own liking i like it to be as natural as possible as i said so i like it to look like that and the only other thing that I change other than that is I add a little bit of exposure. So I'll go up to 0 
add a little bit of contrast so I'll maybe add up to like eight there um, sometimes I mess around a little bit with highlights and shadows but there's no real need to this camera's pretty good so um, something that I do always do is in this creative tab here I'll add some sharpening um, so I'll add like 50 or 60 to that just sharpen the image up a little bit and to get rid of those um, weird parts in the shadows where you get that kind of um, pixelated effect I hit the color wheels and match uh, tab here and just drag the shadows down you'll see the bottom left of the video go a bit darker I just like quite deep shadows like that and I'll sometimes drag the midtones up a little bit to compensate for the darkening of the shadows and with regards to color grading that is it that's all I do um, so I think we're looking pretty good we've got a video with audio and we've got the video looking good everything's synced up um, hit control and s because save your work folks uh, the next part that I'm going to do is add the watermark thing at the top, like the Tweed TV thing that's on here. So I've got that in a different file, so I can right-click over here again in the project files and click import. And I can find where that is in my computer, which happens to be there. So we've got Tweed TV, Tweed TV Dark. I always just import all of these. My Instagram thing that flicks in from the side and my Twitter thing that flicks in from the side and I will open all those and it will bring them up here so I'm going to use the Tweed TV uh, thing here just it's just a PNG that I made on Photoshop um, and I'm going to drag that to the length of the video because I want that to display for the entire timeline or at least the entire time that the video is playing I don't want it for my titles and stuff um, but yeah I can I've got that there but you can obviously see now that that's just displayed in the middle because that's the way the PNG is so what I want to do is make that smaller so in the same way that I zoomed the video in I want to do the opposite with this so I'll select that uh, layer and then I'll scale down on that to about 50% uh, which as you can see it's made it smaller and then I can use the position uh, thing here to move that across to the corner so over there to the side and I'll go uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in from the side, and then use this 540 here. Using the keyboard up and down arrows here to move that around, uh, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, just to make sure that it's the same distance from the top as it is from the side. Um, did I fade these in? No, I didn't. Uh, I thought I had. Yeah, I did fade them in. I didn't fade them out. So, what I'm going to do is the audio, I'm going to fade out exactly the same way that we did with the fade in same with the video cross dissolve drag that to there and we're going to do the same cross dissolve with that tweed tv icon as well so that will fade with the rest of the video as well so now the beginning of the video should look like this you'll watch it fade in everything fades together and that's the beginning of the video um so the next thing that i'm going to do uh, is save my work because save your work folks uh, I'm gonna add the outro kind of um, fadey things that I have um, like the Tweed TV logo I always have if you watch my videos you'll know that uh, I always have them fade I always have that logo fade in again at the end so I'll drag that Tweed TV in here um, you can see that's a little bit above center for some reason I made that PNG with it not in the middle don't ask no idea why um so in every video that i do i have to do the same thing I'll click that click where it says 540 because that's the vertical axis or the y-axis um and one two three four five six seven i'll move it 70 pixels down or 80 pixels down whatever wherever that looks more centered um and then i'll add that cross dissolve to the start and the end of that so that after the video is finished that'll fade out and we get the Tweed TV fade in and then I always add an end screen at the end of my videos which um, shows sort of other videos that you can watch and like a subscribe link and at the bottom of that screen I always have my web address uh, www.leetownsend.com so for that I'm going to go to file new and legacy title uh, I'm going to call it LT because it's Lee Townsend click OK 
and that will bring up this window here which allows me to add text to a video uh, for some reason it's added that stupid thing there I'm just gonna add a new one we'll ignore that we'll put www.leetownsend.com I'm gonna change that font because it's awful uh, acronym yeah let's not use that I always use Calibri for this um, I'll leave that as light for the web address at the end move it down to like 60% size uh, the X position because this video is 1080p that means it's 1920 pixels wide 1080 pixels tall half of that on the X axis mean it is 960 pixels so 960 bang on center and half of 1080 is 540 so if we wanted it center dead center we would make that 540 and that will put that in the center but for this we want it to be at the bottom center that way but at the bottom so what I tend to do is just use 960 960 both the same easy to remember so that it always looks the same so that's moved it down to the bottom so we can just hit that cross drag that onto the timeline like we did with the Tweed TV logo make it as long as we want as long as we want those video suggestions to stay up at the end and I'll cross dissolve that in so it fades in but I don't fade it out because that sort of lasts till the end of the video so now after this Tweed TV that will fade out and the leetownsend.com will fade in and it's as simple as that adding text uh, to this video and then the next thing we're going to do is save your work and we're almost there with it I mean I'm not going to go into as much detail as I would usually put into my own videos with that the animated text things if you want a more in-depth video editing tutorial ask for that in the comment section below because um, I'm not going to do all of that stuff now you know like when I make a video and the song title comes up and then it sort of moves and splits and the uh, artist comes up below um, because that's a little bit more advanced than this this video really is quite a beginner's thing um, but I can teach you to do that if you request it uh, just in another video I think um, so I am going to add some titles to the beginning just so that you can see how the sort of finished thing should look so I'm going to select all of this and drag it away from the start a little bit to make room for some titles and I'm going to do it in the same style that I would normally do I'm just not going to overlap them like I normally would um, I will overlap the second one you'll see what I mean anyway um, so what I'm going to do is go back to file new and legacy title it's exactly the same title that I just used for the web address uh, I'm going to call that don't dream it's over because that's the name of the song um, and then what I do now is add a text layer uh, and I'm going to call it don't dream it's over again uh, that automatically goes into acronym font um, the only time I ever used ac that acronym font was uh, a long while ago when I did a cover of uh, a Linkin Park song called One More Light um, if you haven't seen that then that's uh, yeah I don't know what I was thinking with that font because it's dreadful but anyway I'm gonna move on to Calibri which is the font that I use for this I'm gonna change the weight to bold instead of light I'm gonna change the font size to 120 that looks all right to me I want it dead center so 960 as I said is half of 1920 and half of 1080 is 540 so that's dead center I can give it a color can't remember what color I used on the original version of this video but for the purposes of this I'm gonna make it an orange color uh, by clicking there yeah that looks right um, I'm gonna add a shadow which I always do actually there's no need to because it's only gonna be shown on a black background usually I add a drop shadow I click the shadow thing there and I give it a distance of zero a size of 30 and a spread of 30 and uh, click the cross drag that onto the timeline and that is how that works so we'll obviously cross dissolve that in and out as well so that it fades from black fades in and then it'll fade out again after that it's a little bit too long we don't want to leave people sitting for ages just watching the same title just like that you want the, your video to come in pretty quickly because people 
people's attention spans, man, you know. Anyway, um, we're going to add one more legacy title. So same file, new, legacy title. And we're going to call this CH for Crowded House because that's the artist that originally recorded the song. I'm going to put Acoustic Crowded House cover. I'm going to black over that. I'm going to change from that awful font. Change it to Calibri. Uh, leave it as light. We'll make it a little bit smaller, maybe like 80. Yep, again, we want it center. So 960 by 540. We've got it dead center. We will leave that white, which is what I tend to do. We'll add that same drop shadow. So distance zero, size 30, spread 30. Click the cross, drag that onto the timeline. Um, apologies if I'm moving too quickly here, but I, I know you can always pause the video to watch what I'm doing. Um, I've added those fades again, the fade in and out. Um, yeah, if I'm going too fast or you've got any questions, you can ask in the comments section below this video uh, if you've got any particular questions. Um, but what I'm going to do here, ladies and gentlemen, is drag this so it overlaps a little bit just so that you can see how that works. So you can see, as I said before, with the layers being on top, you know that this text will always appear above the video because the text layer is above the video layer in the timeline. So if we play that from the beginning, we'll get the Don't Dream It's Over fading in. When this bar gets to the end, it'll fade out, fade in with the Crowded House cover thing. And then here, the video is gonna fade in before the text, and then the text fades out. So hopefully you can see how that timeline works. Whatever's above appears on top, and the timeline moving that way is when things appear and stuff. Um, so I'm gonna save my work because save your work, folks. Um, I think I'm gonna leave the video there. Um, the only thing left to do really is to export this or this video. Um, and yeah, it's a very, very simple edit this, and you can add like the Instagram things flying in and stuff, but that's using things called keyframes, which allows you to animate stuff coming in and out, uh, which I think should be for a different video. If anyone's interested in a more advanced video tutorial, let me know in the comments and I'll make that at another stage. But obviously this is part of a series. I don't think it really fits into this particular video. So um, I'm going to show you just how to export that. So what I always try to do is make sure that nothing's selected here before we do this uh, and make sure that this uh, cursor is at the beginning of the video. So I'll click there, make sure that none of these are white like this. So everything's deselected. And then we can go to File, Export, Media. And you can tell that everything's selected because this says zero, zero start point and five minutes and seven seconds end point, which is the length of the video. Um, what I want to do is change the output name because that's going to be the file name of the video when it's exported. So I'm going to call that, don't dream it's over, test. So DDIO test. Choose where you want it to be saved. You'll see, obviously, these are a couple of past videos that have been uploaded to the channel over the last few weeks. Hit save. And then the only thing left to do is scroll down here a little bit. And I have the bitrate settings set at VBR one pass. I change my target bitrate to 15 and my maximum bitrate to 20. Now, depending on the system that you've got, you might not be able to hit those bitrates um, depending on the specs of your computer. Um, but that's just what I set mine at. Um, I can't remember why I set them there, actually. I think I asked a friend of mine who's into video editing and that's what he told me. So that's just what I've always used. But um, after that, just click export. And that's when the video will start to render. And this is where you'll really notice if you've got an old machine, because this can take uh, quite a long time. I've edited videos on bad machines before now that have taken hours to edit, to, to render. This machine's pretty quick. Um, MacBooks between like 2012 and 2017, 18 used to be pretty slow as well. I've got a 2013 MacBook and it's really not good at editing video. Um, but yeah, as I said, just the, the higher the specs in your computer, the faster this should be. Um, and this isn't particularly quick. I have uh, back in the day when this computer wasn't so old, um, it used to render pretty quickly, but it never takes longer than five minutes for me. 
Um, and obviously your internet's upload speed uh, makes a massive difference when it comes to uploading to YouTube. But we're not gonna do that in this video. We're gonna leave it for now. That's part three. Um, if you've got any sort of questions, like I said, you can get me in the comments section below. You can also get me on Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat and Facebook and all that sort of stuff. At Tweed Nelson is my username across the board. Um, and yeah, if you found this video helpful, please hit the thumbs up thing below to like the video. Subscribe if you haven't already so that you get alerts when I upload new videos. And yeah, add comments and share the video and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, that's it for this video. Until next time, thank you very much for watching and take care and I'll catch you soon. Bye-bye.